بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته May peace and blessings of the Almighty be upon you all. My brothers and sisters, Islam has bestowed rights upon women and children. Or should I say rights for women and children. If you look at the pre-Islamic era, you will come to realize that women were treated like commodities. They were bought and sold. And at the same time, they had no say in community. They were not allowed to own anything at all. They were from amongst those who were considered uh, there for the pleasure of a man. And they were not looked at as human beings to the degree that when a person was informed that his wife had just delivered a girl child, he was so upset that he did not know how to hide his face or where to hide his face from his friends and the rest of community and society that he, would, he considered it part and parcel of his duty to take that innocent baby and to bury the little girl alive in a grave such that she were to die thereafter in it so that uh, he would not have a female child. When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent to us to remove us from darkness into the light, he ensured that this was made prohibited completely in every sense. So not only did it become prohibited to bury the girl child alive, but it became prohibited to become upset at the fact that you've been informed that you are about to have a girl or you've just had a girl child. So up to today, if anyone becomes upset that they've got a female instead of a male, Islam considers that a sin and it is something wrong. You need to thank the Almighty. He is the one who chooses uh, what he would like to give you and I. And he is the one who chooses if he would like to give you and I. So that was the first point of stopping when it came to uh, the existence of this female child. There was a stage, as I said, when this used to happen and Islam stopped it. One of the second things that uh, Islam had come up with is the fact that women used to be inherited and Islam prohibited that. Where if a person had a debt and they owed money to someone, what they used to do at the time is they would send their girls or their women as a payment and they would say that if I die, then you can take my wife or you can take my daughter or you can take my sister and so on. Islam prohibited that and Islam said that we not only would like to or we not only prescribe that you are not allowed to do this, but you must give from your wealth a token amount to the female child in that or in such a way that she will not have to use it on anything it will be token and it will be something that she can have for herself she's not compelled to use it on anyone else and what this means is islam has taken care of the female in that it states quite clearly that the responsibility of the financial needs of the female and other needs of the female are to be met by the closest male relative, whether it is a husband or a father or a grown-up son or an uncle. This person, if he is the closest male relative to a female, he needs to provide for her food, clothing, accommodation and perhaps look after her in terms of health expenses and health matters. So. This is the duty of every single male. This would mean that if we were to follow this, a female does not need to have money because she does not need to spend it for everything. But Islam still gives her an amount and says, don't worry, you can use this. We are just acknowledging you're a human being and you can actually buy what you'd like with this. You can do what you want with this for as long as it is within the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if we take a careful look at this beautiful teaching of Islam, we will come to realize and understand that uh, Islam has actually elevated a female uh, to the degree that in inheritance where people think that uh, a female gets less than a man, in actual fact the male that might have had say for example $50,000 uh, where in this, his sister would have received $25,000 from the same uh, male that had passed away say from their father, uh, it seems from outside that she got less than him. But the amount she got is solely for her to be used in that which is her own choice. The amount which he got, he needs to look after all the females that are the closest to him in relation, including this little sister of his 
that has just received such an amount. So in essence, his 50,000 will probably be divided into about five people minimum, whereas hers is 25,000 for herself. So you can do the calculations and you can see what Islam actually did is raise the, the status of a woman because she was being treated as a commodity by stating that not only are you not allowed to treat her as a commodity, but you have to acknowledge her existence and you have to give her an amount that she will have the full say regarding. And this is why the ownership of property in Islam for uh, the female uh, is something that is considered and it is her right. And this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained. Something very important also regarding women that a lot of people have a misunderstanding regarding. In Islam, a woman is not allowed to be forced to marry whom she does not want to marry. That is very clear. There might be some cultures that uh, use the name of Islam in order to oppress their women, but definitely it is not a part of Islam. In Islam, a woman has the right to decline. You are not allowed to force her to marry someone whom she does not want. And in fact, if she would like to marry someone in particular, uh, then for as long as that particular person uh, is a decent individual, then you need to facilitate that particular marriage for her. This is something that Islam has ordained. It is something that is a responsibility and a duty for the males who are around her to help her to achieve the closeness of the Almighty in this particular way. And this is something that many people sometimes think that Islam has not promoted. That is sad. That is actually a misunderstanding. And this is why we are here today explaining to you that in Islam, a woman is not allowed to be forced to marry whom she does not want to marry. That is what Islam is. Also, what is important for us to realize is when it comes to the closeness of the Almighty, men and women are absolutely equal. They have equal uh, opportunities to gain closeness to the Almighty and they will achieve closeness in fact to the degree that women can actually go beyond the level of a man when it comes to spirituality and achieving closeness to uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, achieving closeness to our maker. Uh, if you take a look at what Islam has done for a woman, it has actually elevated her status to such a degree that it has acknowledged her physical difference. And her physical difference is known by all of us. We respect it and she is asked in a beautiful way to respect it as well. And this is why where people sometimes try to fool a woman uh, to say there is absolutely no difference between a man and a woman. I think every one of us knows that at least physically and at least emotionally as well, there are differences that are from the Almighty. He is the one who chose that and he is the one who has asked us to respect it. But that does not make them any inferior to us. What it does do is it makes us from amongst those who need to fulfill rights that will confirm that she, she is emotionally uh, much different from us uh, as males. And at the same time, physically, we need to honor her because she is the one who goes through the birth of a child. She is the one who goes through the feeding of the child in terms of breastfeeding and so on. All these rules have been laid. Also, when a woman is married, she needs to be considered a partner and she is not to be considered as a slave. We ask the Almighty to bless us all and to grant us goodness. These are just a few points of what Islam has done uh, for a woman and the rights that Islam has placed upon us regarding our own women. We are to treat them in such a way that I end with the statement of the Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, where he says, Khairukum, khairukum li ahli. The best from amongst you is he who is best or the best from amongst you are those who are best to their wives. This is beautiful. And the term Ahl would also include the other family members, but primarily your wife. So if you are the best to your wife and your wife can actually acknowledge that and bear witness to that, then you are the best from amongst us. Thank you very much. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.